All right. So Marlene, first off, welcome back to the podcast. We were just talking about this uh, before we hit the record. You were uh, on in 2020 before. And was that when you were just getting started in real estate or had you been doing it for a year or two before that? No, I that was my first year in real estate. Yeah. yeah. So 2020 was your first year in real estate. You're, um, you get to sell real estate in, in Hawaii, which I'm sure that has its ups and downs. But before we get into it too deep, break down your 2023 results. Because I think the trajectory from when you started to how you finished last year is pretty remarkable. And then we'll break down how you were able to do that for the audience. Okay, so you want to share just 2023? Yeah, and then we'll work our way backwards. Okay, for, so for 2023, um, the GCI was about 523,000. So sales volume was about 18 million. That's awesome. And how many transactions was that? How many closings? That was 26 closings. That's amazing. Awesome job. And, and to give the audience context, the reason why that is uh, incredible is because when we, your first year in the business in 2020, I think you still had a great year. I think you did 150 your first year. Is that right? Yeah, around there. Yeah. And so huge growth over three years. I mean, massive. We don't see that type of growth um, like we have with you. And so that's why I wanted to have you back on the show and talk about what in the world are you doing to have such phenomenal results uh, in a market like yours? So how did you first in 2020, you started off with one strategy and I think that you've shifted over to a different strategy over the last couple of years. So what were you doing before when you first started? So when I first started, I started your program because it was just how to get FISBOs. So I was yeah. like, okay, I'm just going to get for sale by owners. That's going to be like my bread and butter. I'm just going to focus on for sale by owners. Um, but then when the market shifted, there were the for sale by owners were selling their homes on their own. So they didn't need me anymore. Yeah. Okay. So that first year, it was mostly for sale by owners. And so you were able to make six figures your first year going after pretty much one lead source, which you did a great job converting for sale by owners. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So now fast forward, 2023, can you break down kind of your top lead sources and where most of the business is coming from now? Yeah. So right now I am, so I, I don't really have that many for sale by owners in my market. Like I would say I have like five a year. Um, hmm. Expired, we have about zero to two a day. And um, so right now my main lead source is circle prospecting and absentee owners. That's great. Do you, before we kind of um, break that down, do you feel like as the market, as interest rates, you know, start to come back down, as the market start, starts to come back, do you feel like FISBOs will re-enter the marketplace in your market? Do you feel like they will come back eventually? I think so. We just, we never, even in 2020, we didn't have a lot, we didn't have that much. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So your circle prospecting and absentee owner. So this is great. Um, I really want to talk this through. So you did, you did 18 deals. Um, uh, first off, how is it that you are, um, generating the, the opportunities with inside these lead sources? Are you calling them? Are you marketing to them? Are you mailing to them? Are you texting them? Are you door knocking? What are you doing to talk to these, these group of people mainly? Yeah, just outbound calling. So it's all calls. Yeah. Okay. And so are there any tools or resources you can share with the audience that have been most helpful? Like where are you getting the data? Are you using any type of systems to make the calls? Yeah. So I get the data through Mojo. So I'm on their, um, I think their neighborhood search. And then I also get the data through my title company. So with absentee owners, I'll usually ask my title company for a list and then I'll skip trace it through Mojo. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I use. And then I have a CRM where all the leads funnel in. Cool. What CRM are you using these days? I use Follow Up Boss. Yeah. And so that integrates nicely with Mojo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, for for context, like how, how, much, how much prospecting are you doing on a daily basis? Like how many conversations are you typically having on a day-to-day -day basis? Average is about 30. About 30. And are you using their triple line dialer to have those conversations? Yes. And it's really easy to hit 30 contacts because circle prospecting, they all answer like versus expired. Cause I call yeah. with other people in the group and they'll call for three hours and they get, they'll get five contacts. Yeah. It's crazy. For one hour and I get about 12 to 15 contacts in one hour. 
Got it. Now the conversion pr is probably a little bit different though, right? So if you do 30 contacts a day or 150 a week, you know, walk us through what does that typically result in? Like how many leads will you get from that? Because the big, the big uh, challenge with circle prospecting and absentee owners is people are like, I, I have all these conversations, but none of these people are doing anything until six months, 12 months, two years, five years in the future. So can you walk us through kind of what that looks like for you on a, on a maybe a day-to-day -day basis? No, scratch that a week or a monthly basis. So if you're having 150 contacts a week, 30 a day, right? So that's typically uh, probably what about five, 600 contacts per month. What do you typically, what does that result in leads appointments set and listings taken? Um, I would say for leads, I would probably get about four to six leads a week. Uh, and, listings, oh, sorry, go on. No, I just, I, I'm so we'll, we'll, with those leads, can you break down for the audience, what that means to you? So like, what is a lead for you? Yeah, so I had to change my lead structure because so now I follow your framework. So they have timeline. They've uh, they said that they don't have an obligation to another realtor, um, and you ask for the appointment. I believe those are all the the framework for what is what is lead. So you're getting almost a lead every day. I mean, every day that you prospect, you're almost you're getting uh, on average. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great, and those leads, uh, as you're having those conversation, you know, uh, is it because your market is, is more transient or do you feel like it's because you're having so many contacts that you're able to find, you know, a lead a day. And again, a lead a day is saying, Hey, we want to sell. And here's kind of when we're thinking about selling and yes, Marlene, we'd be open to interviewing you when the time is right. What is that typical time frame uh, turn out to be? Are people saying, Hey, you caught us and we're looking to list our house this week, or is it typically uh, three, four, five, six months into the future? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's very rare that people are like, yeah, actually, we're just thinking about it. Like, we're, we want to sell next month. Uh, but it does happen where I'm like, oh, wow, I caught them at the right time. But I would say about six to 12 months out, even longer. Um, I just said an, I uh, obtained a listing last week. I had her in my CRM for two years. So I've been following up with her for two years and um, we talk about winning the, you talk about winning the listing before you even go on the listing appointment. So that's what I was able to do with her. I was able to nurture her, call her monthly. I put her on mailbox power. She's getting postcards. If I see something in her neighborhood, I'm texting it to her and said, Hey, did you just see this hit in your neighborhood? So that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So you generate a lead. There's six to 12 months out typically. And then you follow up with them systematically and when you're talking about so the audience knows winning the listing before you even have the presentation that's exactly what you're doing you've got six months nine months 12 months sometimes to win the client over so when the day comes like all right marlene we're looking to do something you've already pretty much got the listing which um is it true that it's not that your listing and pre presentation skills don't still have to be good but they don't it's not like you're going up against 15 other agents correct Correct. I feel like with expires, like you guys are all in the same playing field. Yeah. But for me, I've been talking to this person for a whole year. I've been acting like their agent this entire year. Yeah. I have come list me calls all the time. Or I have people that I've never even met and they're like, yeah, I'm really like when we're ready in the summer when my daughter graduates and we're moving to Michigan, like I already told my husband, like, we're gonna go with you. Like you're our agent. It's amazing. Yeah. Like the 18, the, or I'm sorry, the 26 closings that you had last year, were those all from the prospecting you did in 2023 or were there some uh, from 2022 that came over into 2023? What I'm trying to help the audience understand is if you really commit to circle prospecting, I mean, can you start in January and have 20, 25 sales in one calendar year from circle prospecting or is it going to take longer than that, do you think? That's a good question. I, I think that it might take at least that year. Okay. For pipeline maturity. Yeah. 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 So when you started doing this, it, it was a couple months for you to fill up a pipeline, build up a pipeline, nurture that pipeline, follow up with that pipeline before you got your first listing. Would you say like three to six months into circle prospecting and absentee owners before it started to really turn into something? Yes. Yes. And now are you consistently what getting two, three listings a month from your efforts over the past 18 months? Last month. Yeah. I think last month I took six or seven listings. Wow. So it's because of last year's work. Yeah. Got it. 
So that's a, it's a, and I talk about this business model. I should talk about it quite often. Uh, uh, I need to talk about it more. Do you find it more enjoyable, more fulfilling than the quick, you know, expires of for sale by owners and having to compete and everything's crazy and everything is really high urgency. Do you like this business model better? So I started calling expires because I was talking to people in our group and they're like, really, you need more expires. Okay, I start calling. Um, but I do like it. It can be boring sometimes because sure. it's just like circling. Um, but I like it. I like to have my iced coffee. I listen to music. I'm just hanging out. And people are usually nicer than expires. Yeah. Um, and then I don't have to be on the phones like 745, like calling the expire, dropping off my resume at their house or, yeah, do you want to meet? Like, let's meet right now. Let's meet this afternoon. So yeah, it's more my time. I love it. That's a hundred. I was going to say the same thing. You can build this business model on your time around your family life, around your life versus the business having to own, own you. And I just feel like long-term, like if you do this for two, three years, I just believe it's more sustainable because if you just, and, and you've heard me say this recently, if you're just all expires and for sale by owners, it's easy to burn out, you know, it's it, because it's such a grind. But when you're building what I call a pipeline business with long-term nurture business, yeah, you might not get something right away, but over the, over a period of long term, again, your income, we talked about in three years time, you went from 150 to, to 525. I think it was worth it for you to, to switch, right? Yeah, I do. And yeah. even if calling just, I, I talk to other people in the group that just do expires. I'm like, just, just do five contacts a day circle. Just start somewhere. You know, you talk about contact distribution. Like you said, don't yeah. just do one lead source, do multiple lead sources. Yeah. And, and your business model is just, the, the way I would sum it up is like the compound effect. Like you're having contacts every day of people who are selling in the future time is going by the whole the entire time and so eventually time catches up with time eventually there's a t there's a time of um just like you said pipeline maturity where you wake up one day it's like wow i talked to these people five and a half months ago now's the time to put this sign in the front yard i can act, i can see it now so let's go back to the phone call for a second what what are these these conversations typically sound like like what are your conversations typically like like what's my script yeah, you could get into the script or you could just keep it even higher level if you want. But like, I would imagine, obviously, you're calling these people out of the blue, right? And yeah, what is it that you're saying to get into these good conversations? Um, I just tell them, I think the main question that I ask them is, you haven't thought about moving, have you? Or, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's it, right? The script's easy. And they either say, well, well, we are thinking about it. And depending on what they say from there, then you could start to uncover motivation and timelines and get it more into the depth of the conversation. Is that right? Correct. And usually people will give you that reflex, like, no, we're not moving. But then I just try to keep asking follow-up questions like, oh, like, why did you choose this area? Or how's your association fees? Have they gone up the last year? I just keep trying to follow up and ask more questions and, until they say, hey, I got to get off the phone. <laughs> yeah. How often do, they, do you find yourself... Uh, having a prospect give you that reflex, I'm not interested, and then actually it being a lead. Does that happen often? Does it happen not often? Does it happen 50-50? Because what I'm asking is, I think uh, a lot of people are just, to your point, they're just reflex, no, I'm not interested. But a lot of those people end up doing something. Are you finding that to be the case on, uh, when you're prospecting? Yes. Yes. I think a lot of people are saying no, or like, yeah, I already have an agent. Okay, great. And then I just keep asking more questions. Like, yeah. So where are you thinking about moving? I love it. So good. Um, can you break down a little bit more of your follow up? So you find a lead, you say you've got a really good conversation, you're getting one of these uh, a day or one every other day. What happens from that point in time? Okay, so once I have a lead, they go into our CRM. And then I will send them my resume and a bomb bomb video. And then I will follow up with them the next day and say, hey, did you get the resume? Or my email will automatically send, hey, did you get the resume? Um, but then I'll also follow up with a call, hey, did you get the resume? Do you have any questions on that? No, I don't have any questions. When would you like to hear from me again? That's awesome. That's I'll structure the follow-up. That's so good. And so you're putting them on some type of direct mail through Mailbox Power. Are you sending something once a month to your nurture database? Is that what you're doing? Once a month, yeah. Once when a month? Months out, if they're 18 months out, I'll wait a little bit because plans change. Yeah. yeah. 
And then how, how often are you calling them? Did you say you're calling your nurture folder every month? Yeah, I'm calling once a month. And yeah. then I'm, I'm usually sending like, I'll send them, hey, did you just see this close in your neighborhood? Mm. And then I will, then I'll give reason to call like, hey, I sent you that listing in your neighborhood. Did you see it? How do you think it compares to your home? Yeah, that's awesome. I think if, if agents are listening to this, I can hear them saying right now, well, what do you, if someone tells you they're, they're moving 12 months from now and you're calling them every month, what are you saying to them? Typically, how do those conversations go? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, that's why I like to send um, market updates. And then I'll just ask them, did you see the market update? Um, yeah, I've seen it. How do you think it compares to your home? All my bathrooms are much more updated, whatever it is. When do you want to hear from me again? Good and for then, you. Yeah. So you're constantly, so you have no issues with staying top of mind. Because some agents, if they say, hey, don't call me or call me back in a year, they won't do anything. And they'll think they'll just try to call back in a year. But you have no problem staying top of mind and calling that person 30 days and saying, hey, we talked last month. Did you get the market update? Here's what's going on. What are your thoughts? You're going to stay top of mind the entire time. That's what you meant earlier when you said winning the listing over that 12 month period, correct? Okay. Right. And I did have a problem with that when I first started circle prospecting and I was following up and they're like, Marlene, who? I don't even know who you are. And I'm like, wait, I called you. Yeah. You yeah. Call me back in six months. See, don't, don't do that. Like I split the time in half when they say to call back. Yeah. So now That's I'm awesome. learning to just call them, just call every month. And, and do prospects, do they sit there and say, Hey, wait a minute. I told you to call me back in seven and a half months. Or are they just, are they open to the conversation every time you call? They totally forgot that they told me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're just reaffirming things and you're just taking them one month at a time through that entire journey until they're ready to actually make a move. Correct. And then every time I do have a call with them, I'll send a handwritten note card as well with my business card. Got it. Yeah, that's great. Are all of your, most of your sales people moving off of the island? Correct. Yes. So there's no such thing really for you as a past client you know, referral system, uh, I guess there could be, but most of your business is going to be people you're selling a house and they're gone forever. They're gone. Yeah. So, but I do get referrals because I do work with all the military clients. So they know, um, soldiers that are coming into the Island. So I just got a referral last week from a client that I was circled prospecting his neighborhood. Uh, he lives in Washington now, but then a buddy is moving uh, to Hawaii. So that was a referral. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have to have a, um, I mean, if you're selling real estate in your market, you have to have proactive lead generation all the time for you to build that pipeline. Um, because unlike other markets that are, you know, you're, you could do two, three, four, five deals with one person. That's not the reality for your market. No, it's too expensive. People tend to stay where they're at or they move off Island. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So now we talked about the past. Let's look, let's look forward for a minute. As you, first off, what's your goal for 2024? My goal is to, here I have it over here. My goal is to net 500,000, like after expenses. So GCI would be um, 766,000. Got it. Okay. So, all right. So we got to create another $200,000 in GCI. And so what type of, so you have a couple hundred thousand dollars in expenses. Can you break those down? Like where, where the money's going? Yeah, so I just did this in our in one of your classes. So I did a so broker split. I think it's about sixteen thousand. So my exp expense is about fifteen percent. So that's seventy five thousand, mm. and then I put taxes thirty five percent, one hundred and seventy five thousand because we pay really high taxes over here. I bet you do. All right, so that makes sense. So on uh, a five hundred thousand dollars income, your expenses are only seventy five k. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, just keeping a high level, you don't have to get into the, the, the weeds of that, but like what, what type of expenses do you incur with your type of business? So I would say just Mojo, um, my CRM, my phone, my internet, the mailbox power, um, my email and property marketing, like photos and stuff like that. Yeah. Photos like per, yeah. When you're looking, I'm just thinking about monthly, but yeah transaction i'm looking at um photos of the home inspection but my i would say my expenses are pretty low compared to someone that is like paying for leads that was my point that's yeah. exactly what i was saying to you. your expenses are so low you have a high 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 profitable business because you do it all through your skills and hard work you're not buying the business that was exactly my point because most agents 
if they're going to buy leads and they generate 500k they probably net 30 percent yeah i actually called like zillow for my area and they quoted me i'll give you four leads a month for 1500 dollars. wow i was like okay i can i can I can just call my neighborhood and I'll find those four leads without paying 1500. Exactly. Unbelievable. Yeah. So you're running at 85% margin. I mean, that is such a healthy, healthy business model. And that's why I'm such a proponent of, of an outbound business, you know? Um, so, so the goal is to net 500 K. Are you going to be doing anything different? Are you adding lead sources? Are you doing anything different when it comes to your prospecting, your conversion, your follow-up, your listing presentation, anything that you're going to be adding to the business that you didn't do last year? Nope. I think I'm just going to make the same amount of contacts and I'm going to keep improving my skills and just stick with my schedule. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to be different. Smart, because now your that compound effect is going to work yet again. You did a lot of contacts last year in 2023 that haven't yet listed. So now you're going to re reap the reward again just by doing the exact same thing, not working any harder, still 30 contacts a day. Now you could do more business simply because you got more leads in the database in 2024 than you did in 2023 than you did in 2022. It's just this snowball that keeps building and building and building and building. So in two or three years time, do you have your eyes set on seven figures? Is that kind of where you see it going? I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at. Yeah. I, well, if you keep doing what you're doing, again, <laughs> the, the pipeline just keeps spitting out these come list me calls, right? right? right. And so over time, it's just going to keep growing. Um, do you have someone helping you manage the business? I know your husband's works, works with you, but is there anybody, is it just you two? It's just us and then we have a transaction coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Last thing is advice. All right. So someone who's starting off circle prospecting, again, there's a lot of, I think, head trash we have to deal with because you, it's not like an expired. You're not going to, it's going to be really rare for you to pick up the phone, call a random person, set a listing appointment for this afternoon. Going back, if you could have just given yourself the advice when you switched business models, call it, when did you have to switch that? 2021 when the market kind of shifted? 2020? Yeah. Yeah. So when you started again, what would you have told yourself that other people just starting circle prospecting right now, they've never done it. They have no pipeline. What advice would you share with them and yourself? I would say just start with a small goal, like just start with one hour of calling a day and, and that's it. And you can still call your FISBOs. You can still call your expireds, but just start small. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Just be consistent, right? I mean, you got to do it every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Do it every single day. Yeah. Can you break down your schedule for us real quick? Yeah. So I wake up at four in the morning and then I go to the gym and I have someone that I go to the gym with. And then I come home, I help my husband get the kids ready for school. He takes the kids to school. And then from eight to nine, I am role playing. I, I either role play by myself, like I'll do the scripts or with another partner. And then nine o'clock, I am on the phones from nine to I think one, I'm on the phones. After that, I'll eat lunch and then I will go on the appointments in the afternoon. If I don't have appointments in the afternoon, then I will just take the day and hang out with my kids. It's amazing. It's a great life. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you and your husband think about the life that you guys have created together selling real estate in just a couple of years? I don't know. I forget what you were doing before, but now you're, you, you know, I don't know the island that well, but half a million dollars a year coming from, I don't know what you were doing before. Is your lifestyle, I mean, what do you, you what do you guys, what do you guys think about that that you've done? I think it's amazing that um, I created this lifestyle by just calling people. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, and uh, we just bought a house. And, awesome. Um, one of the, um, we grew up in this neighborhood, but it's very, really, really, really expensive to buy a house here. But we, we were able to buy a house. So I'm really happy. And um, we both work from home and our schedules are flexible. You know, there's some days or there's some weeks where it's, it is hard where we're like, oh, we're going on appointments every day, you know, and yeah. I, I don't see the kids for that week. But overall, I would say our, our schedule is pretty flexible. Yeah. You've created an amazing lifestyle, Marlene. I think, uh, yeah, your family is lucky to have you. And um, it's just amazing to see how far you've come in just a short amount of time. And so love to maybe do this again, have you on the show in a couple of years and, and just see where you can take this. But um Awesome job. Truly, truly. That's why when you and I talked on a coaching call, I don't know, a month ago, and 
I just wanted to have you on the show to break this down to show people what's possible just through consistent effort. You know what I mean? Because it's not like brain surgery. Would you say this is super, super difficult and super, super hard from the standpoint of like, I know the the productivity side can be have, have its own challenges, but like you're just doing the work. You're just having conversations. You're not you're not shoveling concrete all day. I think about that every day when I think like, oh, I don't want to call. I'm like, dude, you're not even, yeah, you're not shoveling concrete. You're not in the sun. Like, You're not even so, breaking a sweat. Yeah, it's not that hard. That's why I said sometimes it can be boring because it's so easy. I know. Yeah, <laughs> so it's it can get boring sometimes, but yeah, I enjoy it. I like talking to people. I think also um, just being personable with other people is is really important as well. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, listen, I appreciate your time. Like always, you gave, I, I've got a whole page of notes that I took. And so I'm sure the, the audience will too. Thank you so much. If there's an agent who, who's watching this, who has clients that, that they're moving to the island, or maybe uh, you can work with them, where can they connect with you? Um, you can, I can give you my email. They can email That's me. great. That'd yeah. be great. What's the best email for you? It's Marlene at sedinagroup.com. And do you care if I put that in the show notes? So if they have a referral of someone moving from the mainland to Hawaii, that they can touch base with you? Yeah, that works. Awesome. So I'll put uh, Marlene's email address in the show notes. And if you guys have a referral, I promise you, Marlene will take great care of your guys' clients. So Marlene, thank you so much. Appreciate your time today.